Near the end of February, a new software update will be available for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Patch 1.2 will become available and it'll have a lot of bug fixes. We're going to cover all of those in the patch notes today and there are a lot of them. But before we get into today's video, please subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can always unsubscribe later if you would like to. So a few weeks ago now, we got the news that a new patch would be coming out towards the end of February for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to fix a bunch of bugs in the game. Around three hours ago, Play Pokemon put out a tweet with the patch notes included. So we can have a look at all of those today. And like I say, there are a lot of them. This patch, like I say, is going to be due out at the end of February. And that's what they state in this article here. So I'd imagine probably coinciding with Pokemon Day as it is the end of February. Uh, but it will be the 1.2 patch. Obviously, it goes through the details of how you can update your game when the patch does drop by pressing the plus icon on your controller when you're in the home menu over the game icon. And then it'll give you the options for being able to update the game from there. Of course, if you do have auto updates on, it will just update itself. But if you don't, then you'll have to go in and do it manually. So it starts off, thank you for playing the Pokemon series. Below are some details regarding the version 1.2.0 update planned for release in late February for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. With the update, we are planning to add features to Pokemon boxes and bug fixes that affect game progress, among other updates. We will continue to take your feedback very seriously and take measures to improve your gameplay experience. So the thing is, the patch 1.1.0 didn't really fix too much. There was the duplication glitch, which was fixed, but other than that, nothing else was really touched. So the feature adjustments, additional functionality will be added to Pokemon boxes. From Pokemon summary, players will be able to change Pokemon's name, markings, held items, and mark or ribbon related titles, as well as being able to reorder moves, have Pokemon remember moves, have Pokemon forget moves, and use TMs. So all of this functionality will be available from the boxes. You can only do this right now in game when you're in your party view having that accessibility in both your party and in the box view makes things a lot easier players will be able to swap out held items by pressing y button when in the held items view players will be able to select all boxes while moving pokemon or held items in party and boxes view and held items view so that'll be really useful to do so you can actually see all the boxes at once rather than having to scroll through with your shoulder buttons when in battle team view pokemon in your boxes that are assigned to a battle team will now have their icons displayed in a darker hue if those Pokemon are members of the battle team that is currently being displayed. So that makes it a lot easier to identify Pokemon in your boxes that are actually in battle teams rather than not being viewable at all at the minute. Uh, the new screen will be displayed when you connect to the internet from the main menu, just as it is when connecting to the internet from Poker Portal. So anytime you connect to the internet, I guess in your game now, you're going to get a Pokemon news page pop up. Now the bug fixes in regards to Terra Raids. This is a big one and one I really didn't see them fixing, but I'm really pleased they have. A bug that can prevent opposing Terra Pokemon's HP gauge from properly reflecting damage done by certain moves, such as play rough, or certain status conditions may occur in Terra Raid battles, resulting in the Terra Pokemon's HP gauge fluctuating in an unusual manner. This will be fixed. So this is specifically probably talking about the Azumarill bug where Azumarill uses player rough after a belly drum. It's got huge power ability and it would knock out. We had situations against the Charizard, against the Cinderace where you would do enough damage to knock it out, but it would kind of, yeah, fluctuate like it's saying there and the HP bar would go down, but then it would return to about half again and you would still have to continue the battle making it even more difficult and pleased that this has been able to be fixed makes the zoom roll a lot more effective in terror raid battles as well a bug that causes all pokemon on your side of the field to fin it warns despite the hp gauges indicating that they still have hp may occur in black crystal terror raid battles against pokemon with the mightiest mark this will be fixed now this has happened to me a bunch of times when you're farming through these seven star raids and you are sitting in a good healthy spot and then all of a sudden your pokemon faints and you, you think, well, how did that happen? I didn't get knocked out. So having a fix to that problem is huge and it makes just going in and playing the terror raid battles a lot more enjoyable because that is one of the bugs that really does make them a little bit more annoying than the other ones. And we've got another one, a bug that can temporarily prevent a player from entering any input into the game may occur if a terror Pokemon 
takes certain actions while the player is choosing their target move. This will be fixed. A bug that causes a communication error may occur when someone connecting to a terror raid battle sees a different Pokemon displayed on their screen than what the host sees. This will be fixed. So for online raids, that is going to be fixed. A bug may occur that it causes players joining a terror raid battle from the terror raid battle search screen to be brought to a terror raid battle against a Pokemon different from the one they saw displayed. I mean, how does that even happen, really? But I'm pleased it's fixed. A bug that causes terror raid crystals not to appear for a set amount of time may occur under certain circumstances. This will be fixed. So all of those fixes to terror raids is a very big plus and they are some big fixes as well. Things like I say, like the play rough bug, I didn't expect us to see getting a fix for that. Super happy that they have fixed it. Terror raids as well are a big part of the post game. You know, once you've finished everything, there is very little to do in these games outside shiny hunting and terror raids. So for them to fix those, it is a big bonus and uh, big props for them to actually doing it. Now on to battles. Tight matchups against Pokemon that have fainted will no longer appear when selecting a move or target during double battles. So that will be fixed. Zoroark that has terrestrialized and is disguised as another Pokemon via its illusion ability can be identified as Zoroark by using using the check target option, this bug will be fixed. When a Zoroark has terrestrialized and is disguised as another Pokemon via its illusion ability, the type matchups or moves are displayed based on the type of the Pokemon that Zoroark is disguised as, rather than Zoroark's terror type. This bug will be fixed. Stats of Dondozo with Tatsugiri in its mouth will increase when Dondozo's uses order up, even if the move should have been negated. For example, an opponent uses Protect, this bug will be fixed. Now this has been huge in actually big official events where Dondozo players will hit that order up into a protect and they'll still get the boost. So that is a bug and that will not be happening any longer. That is going to be fixed. That is a huge one, especially for competitive play. If a Pokemon terrestrialize is using a Destiny Bond and then faints, the effects of Destiny Bond will fail to activate. This bug has been fixed. So that is a big one as well because It'd be pretty annoying if you terrestrialized on purpose to get knocked out after using Destiny Bond to kind of pick up a knockout on your opponent and it didn't. Uh, so that fix is a big one. Now moving on to the other bug fixes. We will address an issue that causes the game to forcibly close at certain locations. As a result of this fix, there may be a reduction of Pokemon or people displayed in certain towns or in the wild. So this is probably addressing the random game crashes that players have experienced. And it'll be interesting to see where these areas are in particular and what Pokemon have been removed from them. It may limit some shiny hunting spots in particular. That's what I'm thinking of. The NPC characters being removed or other characters that are just being removed from these areas shouldn't make too much difference. But certain Pokemon removed from certain areas to avoid these crashes could have an impact on some things players do in their games. When a Pokemon that is not part of the Paldea Pokedex is obtained through a link trade, it is displayed as being registered to the Paldea po Pokedex. This will be fixed, so that's like a Hisuian Pokemon or anything that would be transferable from bank. Certain actions can cause the main character's expression not to change until the game is closed and reopened. This will be fixed. Bug occurred for some players after ranked battle season one, where visiting the ranked battle screen immediately after the season's rules reset, season's results had been calculated, caused a communication error right after these players received their rewards. Following this error, the players were unable to participate in any further ranked battles. This will be fixed. Never experienced that myself, but that is a pretty bad bug that's in the game. So nice to see that that's been sorted out. If a player has created several battle teams, but does not use the battle team in the first slot for their ranked battles, they may not receive the master rank ribbon after winning ranked battles in master ball tier. This will be fixed. So it doesn't matter where you put your Pokemon battle team now or which one you use in ranked battles. If you do get to master ball tier with that team, then they will get the ribbon. When a Pokemon you caught comes back to you from another player, through a link trade, it may not listen to your commands in accordance with what is written in the profile app. Pokemon caught at level XX or below will listen to you in commands. This will be fixed. A bug is preventing the Pokedex from displaying additional entries, such as entries for shiny Pokemon or Pokemon that were received through surprise trade from players that play in different languages. For Pokemon species that were already registered in the Pokedex, this will be fixed. Objects such as Pokeballs may be displayed in certain locations of the field unintentionally this will be fixed. Passerby will no longer be displayed during certain battles that take place in towns during the main story. So that's NPC characters that are like walking randomly through battles and yeah it looks kind of weird. So 
that to be fixed is good other select bug fixes will be implemented so there will be other things on top of everything that we went through as well today notes we are planning further features and bug fixes not listed in these patch notes please check back here for full details when the update data is distributed update content and details are subject to change so there can be further updates to these patch notes as well which we can review when we do get those released officially but these are huge patch notes that we're getting and some big, big changes. I think the big takeaway for us in this one today is definitely the changes to Terror Raid Battles. It's affecting a lot of players and how players go in and enjoy the Terror Raid Battles, not even just online, but when they're playing solo in their games. It means you're going to be able to kind of run through a lot of the higher difficulty terror raids a lot easier with pokemon that should be doing a good job but are kind of handicapped because of these glitches so once these patch notes do get dropped hopefully the game runs a lot smoother and people don't experience these crashes and all these other things that are affecting just the overall enjoyment of these games well that is everything that we're going to cover in today's video i just wanted to make a quick video about it because it is pretty big news the patch note that we got last time for 1.1.0 was pretty mediocre nothing really happened there but this one they seem to be fixing a lot of issues which is a real positive going forward especially if we are getting a dlc somewhere down the line with an announcement likely to happen around pokemon day these are fixes that have to be done really before a dlc gets brought in because people aren't going to want to play these games continually if they're experiencing these bug problems hope you found today's video useful if you have please drop a like do subscribe to the channel for more pokemon scarlet and violet content and i will see you all in another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye